Duan have been kind enough to send me out another light to have a look at. Now this one is a little bit different from the lights we've looked at before, but just to warn everyone, this is a light which I have been sent, I haven't paid for it, I have a good relationship with Duan, you know, I chat to them, so take the review that I'm about to give you with that pinch of salt and just know that uh, when I'm doing this kind of thing I try to be very upfront with any relationships, collaborations, that kind of thing. They haven't paid me to do this but I have received the product so everyone should know about that. This is going to be a review of the new B500 from Duan. I've got the light just here and we're going to take a little bit of a look around it. Now I think the first thing to uh, state in this review is that although I'm looking at uh, everything that's happening with this light, you know, and uh, I'm going to go through my experience with it. I'm not going to go through a raft of technical details. It's more going to be my experience of using the light as a relatively experienced filmmaker and just working out what what is good for the kind of shoots that I've been doing, what could be improved for the kind of shoots that I'm doing, and how I think this fits into my workflows. What is it? Well, basically it's a 500 watt bicolor LED light. It is a cob LED light, which means that uh, it's gonna be a hard light to start with until you add in uh, any kind of modifiers or you bounce the light or something, that kind of thing. It's got a standard Bowens mount on the front, although I would say that it looks a little bit different from Bowens mounts that you may have seen on a lot of other lights and indeed on the Molus lights because this is just the connectors at the front just here. So everything snaps on just the same, but it isn't an embedded ring. That I suspect is a measure to deal with uh, heat, so keeping the maximum amount of this um, cob exposed to the air so that it can uh, kick off the heat and not building up amount around that. That is my take on why that would be done. A few other things you're gonna notice when you're handling the light. It's got a lot of fans, and they're on both sides and indeed on the back as well. And everything is vented at the bottom and also vented at the top and you can see the big heatsink in there. Now Zhiyun call their fan and heatsink combination in this series of lights the Dynavort system. It's a fancy name. And the reason I suspect that we have this more elaborate cooling system and bigger heatsink is because unlike the Molus light, which I did a review of, this light combines the control unit, ballast, and the lamp head. You might have noticed when I flicked around just there, the only thing that you're going to have to plug in is this point just here, which is a very standard, in the UK we used to call them kettle leads, IEC type leads. It's three pins, it goes straight into your mains power supply, and that has a couple of advantages over a more traditional ballast and lamp head based system. Primarily, the advantage is that uh, with this, you only have that, that is your entire lamp. You don't have to have anything else with it. You can just use it like that with the plug-in. And if you want to have a longer run to the light, all you have to do is get a longer lead and they're very standard leads, you can make them up yourself. So rather than have to buy a header cable, which might be expensive, it might have proprietary connectors, it might be complicated to make it yourself. Um, and if you're trying to buy it off a manufacturer, they might not do all of the lengths that you want. This, because it is just taking mains power to the lamp head, really has no restriction outside of you know line loss on hundreds and hundreds of meters of uh, cable and i think at that point you know you'll have someone dealing with whether you've got line loss and where you should put your generators or whatever else so that is the big advantage just here now there are some downsides to that as well comparing this again to other lights within dune's lineup the molus g300 that i tested the head unit it's got a bit of weight to it, but it's not as heavy as this. So if I was looking to fly something out and over someone, um, I would be able to use a lighter weight stand with that fixture rather than with this one where everything's contained in the lamp head and therefore the lamp head has a little bit more weight to it. Now it's not an exorbitant amount of weight and indeed if you're looking at other fixtures, I in my last review compared quite a lot to the aperture fixtures because everyone's familiar with them, but a 600D, 
this isn't any heavier than a 600D. So if you're thinking about rigging things, then I think that this is, it's reasonable. It's not crazy heavy. Now, in terms of light output, 500 watts is very respectable. And unlike the previous line of lights, this line has the maximum output stated. So there's no boost mode or anything like that with this. It is a 500 watt light and you get that all the time and it's designed to do that all of the time. By color, so you can switch between, um, I think it's 2800 to, I'm terrible with specification, so I'll ping that up on the screen with the correct numbers for the white balance that you'll be able to get out of this unit. Control wise, you have on one side, the um, dimming control. So you can click that to jump through in 20% increments, and you can also dial it in for finer control. On the other side, you have your CCT for white balance. So again, you can click through to your standard settings, you know, like 3200, 5600, and you can also then turn that knob to get more granular control. You'll be able to bond the light up to Xun's app and control everything from there as well. And they've just updated that actually. So now it's much more pleasant when using it on an iPad because you can flip it, have it widescreen. And they've also been working on the user interface a little bit. So that's improving all the time. It's better than when I did my last review. So that's good. Disadvantage wise, because you don't have the separate control slash ballast unit with this, it means that when you fly this light up really, really high, suddenly all of the controls that you need to access are up really high and you won't be able to control them. Now, there are a couple of ways you can get around that. One of them is obviously with the app, you can control that and that should alleviate that problem entirely. And they also make this little K1 wired remote control. I've got it just here. To be honest, I haven't actually used this much. Um, I plugged it in, had a little bit of play. In fact, I've still got the... Um plastic on. You've got normal controls on there. You can switch between different modes. You can access your menu and you can dial up your CCT and your uh, dimming controls on there. On the end, it's a standard USB-C. I don't think the camera will focus on it. Oh, well, there we go. It is a standard USB-C connection on the end of that. And then the controller itself looks quite nice. I think this is the kind of thing that will pick up scratches like anything and then the uh, mode and menu buttons down there. It does feel a tad plasticky uh, if I'm being critical of it, but I think it'll do the job. Connects to the USB-C port, which is just on the side there. And then you'll be able to dangle that down and control any of the settings from the wired remote control. I always do appreciate the option of having a wired remote because when you're in a rush, when you're setting things up, and if you're working with other crew members, they won't necessarily always have access to your device unless you've given them your phone or your iPad, and they might not have the app installed. So if they're gonna use this light with the app, they've got to download that onto their device, they've got to Bluetooth reset it, they've got to bond it up to their device, and that will mean that you no longer have that fixture on your version of the app. So there's downsides to that. And I think having the remote is a way of sidestepping it. So if you are on a shoot and you've got an assistant with you and you need them to tweak something on the light and they don't have your phone, your iPad's over there, whatever it is, they could just go up and tweak it on the remote control. So definite benefit, but uh, not essential because you can get around it in a lot of different ways. So that's really the outline of the light, the proposition of it. A couple of things that I've noticed when I've been using the light, and I have put it out on a number of shoots. In fact, that is why I'm a little bit late to the party getting the review out. I like to make sure that I've actually used it in a few different settings, not just sat in my room here, turned it on, you know, twiddle with the settings and said, yeah, it's great, I got it for free. So I've taken it out into different uh, environments, used it uh, for different purposes on different shoots. So something which I was really curious about, and at first before I started using it, I was struggling to understand where it would sit compared to the Molus G300, because on paper, they have roughly the same output if you use the max boosting overclocking mode on the Molus G300. So I thought, well, Am I gonna to bother to take this one out when I've got that? The advantage of this one, apart from the power going straight in and you not having to have the controller, is that it's actually quite a lot 
quieter when it's running at full whack. And in fact, it's quieter at all the other settings. And that's because of the larger heatsink that uh, they've got built into the body here, all of the venting, and of course, all of the different fans. Now the fans still do spin up, and it's still a really compact fixture, especially considering how much power it is putting out. I wasn't in any particularly sound critical environments. I've used it uh, in places where I'm gathering B-roll and I just need a lot of level, and it worked fantastically. Bonded up with the app really well. I can strap on all the bones mount uh, accessories. It comes with the um, little intensifier reflector, which actually I think is slightly different, just as a an observation, from the reflector which came from the Molus light just there. This one for the Molus seems slightly more rounded, where this one is a little bit straighter on the sides. It's a minor difference, but I suspect that it's to do with how the cob LED um, that you can see just there is actually sitting into the dish and on the other lights it was slightly different and there was some reflector built into the LED um, fixture there as well so yeah that is that's just a weird observation of mine. In terms of using the light I feel my wife recording a demo she's an opera singer and I thought that'd be a nice little test of it so I had that rigged up um, before, when I did a recording of her in a church, we used the G300, so now I'm using this one. Didn't find any issues with the sound, and in the environment that we were in, it was actually a much brighter environment. I was having to compete with the level outside a lot more, so it was running at a much higher level, and therefore, if I'd been using the Mullis, I think the fans would have been spinning up, and it would have been quite a lot louder than this one was. I've also used it to film something uh, with an artist, and I can't share any of that, but uh, that has been working really well. No issues with sound on that because we were just running for B-roll, but the light coming out of it is looking good, getting really nice color rendition, all the rest of it. Same as with some of the other Molus lights, it does skew towards a slightly different um, map of how it does the spectrum, what's the word I'm looking for, it's like the CCT curve or something. In any event, this light isn't necessarily going to give you the same color output in terms of green magenta shift as some other professional lights might. Now that doesn't actually affect necessarily whether it can render colors well, but it does mean that when you're mixing and matching with other lights, you might find that this looks just a tiny bit more magenta than those lights would do. Now, in the event, if you're running everything within the Duon line, that's probably gonna sit just fine, but it's it's something that's worth noting. Can be easily corrected um, with either a little uh, 1 16th um, magenta correction gel, um, so shifting it towards green, but I think that uh, most people aren't gonna bother with that. That's a little bit um, niche and a little bit uh, a little bit detailed really. When I've been taking it out on the shoots, I have found that actually it's really nice just to have the one thing on the stand and not have something else dangling off that stand. It gives you a little bit more freedom and it means that uh, you're not constantly having to, you know, adjust things, uh, hook it up to the next um, riser if you need the cable to be moving up higher and you haven't got enough header cable on, whatever light you're using. This solves that issue by having the standard kettle lead, so that's really, really nice. So based on that, I'm pleased that there's a fixture that's got a little bit more in the way of um, cooling built in. It's designed to run at those higher light levels for longer periods. I think something which people will find when they pick this light up, it's got a lot of plastic in the construction. That really does need to be stated. So the handle is plastic, and it's kind of a translucent sort of plastic. So if you imagine like, uh, the OG iMac. It's not fully see-through, but it's got a translucence to it. It's kind of smoked gray, like the expensive graphite one, if you like. And it's all plastic over the top. Um, the cob itself is within a metal housing, and it's obviously got a lot of metal componentry in it. I suspect that the plastic um, shell is a measure to keep the weight down so that it doesn't get really, really heavy. Because I reckon that even if this was uh, cast in aluminium, it would be much heavier and that that would start to be a little bit um, harder to use. You wouldn't be able to use um, the lighter weight stands. You'd have to really be thinking about how you're mounting it. There's a lot about this light which is telling me that it's the 
it's the more professional version of that light but then a lot of things on the molar seemed just um, a little bit hardier in some ways there is of course the umbrella uh, mount just there as well if you were wanting to do something really quick really dirty Having said all of that, I haven't had any issues with it and um, the adjustments have held really well. So when I've been putting it on stands, locking it in, nothing's been drifting around. And in fact, having a little bit more weight out the back does help to counteract bigger modifiers. So if you've got a big softbox on the front, then this actually is a little bit easier to adjust. It doesn't have that tendency to be so front heavy. Now, June are making a Molus uh, B100 and I think a B300 as well as the B500. So there is a selection of lights within this range. It will be interesting to see who goes for the G line, the G300, for example, and the G100, versus who's going for the B line of lights. I'm a little bit torn because I really like um, the form factor of the G series, and I think that there's a lot of situations where I would like to be able to boom things out where just having the lightest weight lamp head would win in that equation. Having said that, I really like the fact that this just has a few more concessions towards it being a more professional fixture that's going to be used at its maximum intensity for longer periods of time. I think it's worth also noting that at maximum level you're probably going to struggle in a room like this to record um, really clean audio with the fan spinning up. Now it's not to say that uh, everything's unusable, it's actually really well controlled, but I think that uh, if you're looking at this as an interview light and you're thinking I will go into an office space and someone will be sitting by the window and I'm going to compete with the sunlight and bring the light in close to them. What you're going to find is that uh, the fan will actually spin up when it's at that um, maximum intensity level. If you're doing B-roll, not a problem. If you're keeping it below like 80%, not a problem at all. And even at 100%, if it's backed off a little bit, you can probably work it but it's something you should be aware of because it's not something that people necessarily always consider when they're looking at uh, lights, you know, how it's gonna play for sound. Biggest thing for me though, it is small light. I can fit three, four, five of these in the space of one 600D case, and it's getting me close to the same output. Bicolor fixture as well, of course, so we've got all of that controllability. In a room like this, I don't need this light because the light from outside the ambient is controlled. I've got a 100 watt LED just here in a softbox. That is plenty and I've not even got it 100%. It's like, I don't know, 16%. I've got an X60 behind me, again, like on 12%, something like that. So if you're in a controlled environment, you don't need that much power. Get the B100, get the B300. Look at this as something which is gonna be lighting larger spaces or competing with higher levels of ambient light. Overall, really positive experience with this, and it's interesting that this is the first LED that I've used which actually is taking the approach of some more traditional lights. So when I started off, tungsten lighting was still a thing, and you would have, I don't know, like a redhead or something like that, which was literally just mains power into the lamp. Maybe there was a switch on it. So it's much more that approach where you just got mains power going in and that approach is kind of simple and beautiful. There is a real benefit to it and you don't have to have expensive extras to make the light work at a distance. And it's really nice that that form factor is coming back into play here. So that has been my review of the Mollus B300 from Juan. It's a really interesting light and I can't wait to see what Juan come out with next because this is still part of their first wave of lighting that they have produced where they're actually really starting to take on board all the different feedback and come up with their own approach for how they do LED light. And it does seem to be that they are always doing something slightly different from everyone else, which is actually cool because, you know, better solutions, better workflows are only found by experimenting with the form factor and maybe throwing back to some older school things to make it a little bit more suitable for the kind of work that uh, people like us are gonna be doing. If you've got any questions about the fixture, drop them down below. More than happy to have a conversation in the comments. And if you're thinking about using this on a shoot, just have a chat, you know, tell me what kind of shoot you're gonna be using on and what you're hoping to get out of the fixture. And yeah, we will see if I can give you some recommendations for anything in the comments below.